competition. The kick ass podcast that make you want to listen. The place where boxing fans and fighters rejoice. Thumbs up for Richie. You're listening to the fighter's voice. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Richard Ortiz of The Fighter's Voice, the only voice that matters. I'm like our guest, Jason Mayhem Maloney. We're simply knocking out the competition. And we're going to talk about his upcoming fight, Stockton, California. The Maloney himself is going to invade the 209. May 13th, Top Ranked Boxing Live on ESPN. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, our guest, Jason Maloney. Welcome to The Fighter's Voice, Jason. Thank you very much, man. It's good to chat to you again. Thank you. You know, I, it's always a pleasure, uh, Jason. You know, a lot of people were bringing in questions today when, once you were coming on the show. And you'd be surprised who where these questions are coming from. And, and um, I'll, I'll let the surprise be the surprise when, when uh, we go to the questionnaire. But, but I, I just got to ask you this, man. What time is it right now in Australia? Uh, it's about midday, 1230. Midnight, yeah. is that what you said? No, no, midday. So, yeah. Oh, I'm just, uh, Mid- oh okay. Then you're, you're good. You're good. We're good. We're good. Just got home from training, did our eight-round sparring just then and had a quick share, and here we are. How's training camp going? Let's jump right into it. Yeah, it's going great, mate. I um, Yeah, I've obviously uh, the announcement of the fight has only been recent, sort of last week, but I've known about this fight for a long time, and I've, you know, because I was sitting at number one with the WBO and number one with the WBC, I knew that my time was now. And as, as soon as Anui announced that he was vacating the division and, and, and vacating all the belts, I knew that I was going to get my opportunity to become world champion. And um, I've been working extremely hard all year. And um, yeah, I'm ready to go. I can't wait to get in there and, and achieve this dream. Well, come in the same frame of mind you did when uh, Devin Haney uh, fought uh, your Australian, uh, uh, your friend, uh, your your, your co-mate, because you came in possessed, my man. You could have beat anybody that day. I mean, I I truly believe that day that you stepped in the ring in Australia, you were blessed by the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, because your head movement, your, your just your velocity of punches and just your killer instinct, everything was clicking for you that day. Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like um, this is my time and, um, you know, I, I've had my, well, this is my third opportunity to, to, to fight for a world title, but I feel like even though no one wants those losses, I feel like um, I've become a much more complete fighter and this is my time, um, third time lucky. And, yeah, I feel like I've improved so much over the years. I've learned my lessons and, I feel like I'm in great form. I'm ready and I believe I can beat anyone in, in the division. And now it's my time to take over and, and start my reign as champion. Third time's a charm, man. I believe that a big blessing is coming your way. I'm going to be excited about this event. You know, uh, the Fighters Voice, we plan on going down there and covering the event. I actually got to get a hold of Evan and promoter Rick Morrigan. I'm going to see if we can set up the pot, the podcast there uh, during the press conference so I can pull all the fighters in and maybe, maybe some post fight interviews, you know, cause it's in my backyard and you know, I'll straight over the 209. <laughs> Look forward to that, mate. That'd be good. Good to meet you in person. Oh, absolutely, man. And I'm going to make sure I bring a size medium with me, a uh, shirt and sweatshirt, man. So are you a medium or, or what are you larger or, or medium or what is your size? Yeah, medium's man? good. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll have a team of only one for you too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There you go. I'm, I'm loving it, man. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, um, from from training in, in Las Vegas to Australia, you know, one of the questions that came in was from Frank Estea. Oh, and he yeah. Said, I mean, yeah. Yeah. He, he's, yeah. He said some fun things. Uh, you know, he kept uh, he said, Richard, make sure you ask him about this. Make sure you ask him about that. But one of the, the key questions is, um, what is the bigger difference uh, from training in Las Vegas to training in Australia? Oh, look, there's not a massive difference, but yeah, firstly, shout out to Frank. He's a champion and I look forward to catching up with him when we get over to, to Las Vegas next week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's not a big difference. Um, I, I like getting over there mainly because there's just no distractions at all. Um, you know, obviously being at home, I'm 100% dedicated and, and disciplined fighter. So distractions don't get in the way that much, but I'm also a father. I've got, I've got two young kids and you know, coming home from training when you're exhausted and having to be the dad that I want to be and spending time with the family, 
I love that. But when it comes down to, you know, the month before my fight, I have to knuckle down and I have to be selfish and I have to isolate myself and go from the loving father to the killer. Um, and that's what we'd like to do. We get over there for a whole month in, in Vegas and the work stays the same. I work very hard all year round, but we'll have some good sparring lined up over in Vegas and just yeah, have that have that month to acclimatize, adjust the time difference, um, and just put in some really solid work over in Vegas, and then obviously we can uh, yeah just really sharpen the tools before we step in the step in the ring on May thirteen and become world champion. Exactly, we're looking forward to that. Now, here's one thing you really need to sharpen, man. I think a lot of people want to know exactly because Frank's blowing me up about this. He said, "Ask Jason, did he ever return that shopping cart?" to the market in Oklahoma. <laughs> of course I did, Frank. You know I'm a good man. I wouldn't take anything like that. No, we of course we did. Of course we did. Do you mind sharing uh, that story a little bit? <laughs> well, I guess to sum it up shortly, we, um, we're obviously staying in a hotel, but we don't like to leave anything up to chance. We like to be in control of everything. And we got to the hotel and there wasn't much good food around and things like that, so we had to improvise. So we walked to the closest shops. Um, we didn't have a car, but so we just walked across the road and, yeah, we bought all our food. We bought, like, an electric fry pan. We bought a microwave. We bought all this stuff so that we could cook our own food and eat what we want to eat and fuel the body the way we, we know we wanted to and we needed to. And, um, yeah, so we bought a bunch of stuff. Um, and we had all, yeah, a massive trolley full, full of food and, and cooking utensils. And yeah, we had to get them back to the hotel. So we borrowed the trolley. We didn't steal it. And we walked, yeah, a good couple of miles with the trolley and all the food back to the hotel. And, um, then we went and returned it after we got all our stuff to the hotel. But <laughs> Frank thought it was funny and he videoed us. We're on this trolley down the road with all their food and, and, and cooking, you know, microwaves and fry pans in it. And yeah, it was a bit of a laugh. Good times. Exactly. Good times, man. Hey, you do, you got to do what you got to do, man. I mean, to put A, B, C and together, man, you, you got to reinvent yourself at times. You got to uh, avoid obstacles and just make your own destiny. And that's what you guys did. You had to eat, my man. You got to adapt. Yeah, we don't like to, uh, you know, some people like just to eat out at restaurants and things before a fight, but you can't, I don't know, you, you can't just put your, put your, I don't know, all your trust on someone you don't even know. What if that food's been, you know, contaminated or it's not cooked properly and then you get sick the day before a fight? It's not worth the risk. No, it's not. Um, Jason, why is this time different? This third time, this third opportunity, why is this third time different to you? What does it mean walking into the ring for the third time to challenge for the world bantamweight title? I mean, why is this different? Yeah, I think I just learned a lot from those two fights, those two losses. Um, perhaps the Rodriguez fight, even though I think I won and it was a very, very close fight that could have gone either way, um, perhaps just the Touch too early in my career. I'd only just recently changed to my new trainer and my trainer now, Angelo Hyder, and we were still, I guess, jelling and, and working together. And I guess, you know, it takes time to become the fighter you want to come, become and, and, and gel with your new coach. And that first world title fight probably came just a fraction too early. As I said, I still thought I won, but um, perhaps – experience on that big stage wasn't quite there for me at that stage and um yeah I learned a lot from that loss um and I feel like I improved a lot after that fight and obviously got myself back into title contention and got myself in line to fight Nao and Nui for for the under you know the unification uh world title um with two belts on the line but I mean I, I gave that fight everything I had but Nui is an exceptional fighter um, I went in there and didn't really fight how I wanted to fight. Um, take nothing away from him. He he was very good at controlling the fight and dictating how how the fight went. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot from that fight as well. Um, sharing the ring with someone like that um, was great for me and my development. 
Um, and I feel like now I've, you know, I've worked my way back. I've had four hard fights and four good wins since that loss to Anui, and I'm ready. Um, I'm much more complete now. Uh, my confidence, my experience, my my strength and my speed and my fitness, everything has just gone to another level, and I feel like this is really my time, and I'm going to grab it with both hands. Um, I don't think anyone in the division can beat me now. Um, and I'm out there to prove it. I've got to start my reign as champion, and that all starts by beating Vincent Astrolabio and becoming WBO world champion. I'm looking forward to that, and I can see that um, happen once that strap is around your waist. And promoting that fight is uh, Rick Murigan, and uh, just coming off the uh, Jose Ramirez fight in Fresno, California. And Rick only knows how to do it one way, and that's 110%. So look for, for that Coliseum. That That's a uh, event to also sell out. And, of course, you got Stockton Zone, uh, Gabriel Flores Jr., who's mm -hmm. making his long-awaited return to Stockton, California. And, matter of fact, we have trainer Gabriel Flores uh, Sr. on the show next uh, Tuesday, as well as Jack Reese will be on there, one of the best referees in, in the business. So – Knowing that Top Rank is doing their homework, ESPN, one of the largest and crisp is uh, uh, camera work when it comes to boxing. Um, you know, I used to like HBO's uh, camera work when, when they were uh, rocking and rolling, along with Rick Morrigan. Man, look for a dynamite show to take place uh, May 13th, Stockton, California. Tickets went on sale just a couple of days ago, and I'm hearing the Flores Camp are already sold, um, you know, in the hundreds are, are already. So, Look for that to sell out. And um, also, and then we'll talk uh, at the hotel next door. It's called, I believe it's called the Waterfall. Excellent hotel, man. And then when it's all said and done, don't go straight to your room, man. Keep that strap around your waist. And, hey, you deserve to parade around there and uh, let everybody know you took over Stockton, California. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Um, yeah, it's, it's a moment that I've dreamt about my whole life is, you know, the night that I finally – be crowned world champion and, and have that belt around my waist. So, um, yeah, I know it's going to be a great, great night. Um, yeah, as you said, Top Rank and Rick and everyone involved do a great job and it's a stacked card. Um, obviously, it's a double sort of, you know, world title double header with Janabek in the in the main event and then me as a co-feature. And then, yeah, the undercard stacked as well and Gabe Flores, like you said, some good fighters on the show. And uh, yeah, once I get that belt around my waist, um, yeah, I won't be nicking off early. I'll be I'll be enjoying that night and, and celebrating because it's going to be a special moment for not only me but my team and my family and and everyone that has been involved um, and helped this happen. Um, you know, it's 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 been a team effort, um, and yeah, I can't wait to to get the job done and, and celebrate with everyone who supported me along the way. What, what do you know about your opponent, uh, Vincent? I'm going to do my best on his last name. Astro Labio. I'm yeah, not sure about right. last name, right? I mean, what do you know about your opponent? Uh, I, look, I, you, I saw you laugh, so I must have said something kind of funny. No, everyone says that, but your guess is as good as mine. Astro Labio, <laughs> I think, but yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've done my research on him. I like I do all my opponents. I've watched a lot of his fights, um, and he's in good form. He's coming off, you know, a good win against Rigandale. Um, which I guess on paper he wasn't expected to win. And then he had the um, world title eliminator against Potapov, which he won. Again, another fight that I guess maybe he wasn't expected to win, but he's in good form. Um, he's earned his opportunity to fight for a world title and I'm sure he'll be hungry. You know, it's, it's every fighter's dream to become world champion. So I know that he'll be well prepared, but... Um, yeah, I just believe in myself and I know the hard work I've put in. And I, I don't think anyone can beat me on May 13 and I'm just preparing for whatever he's got. Uh, I'll have everything in my arsenal to beat him and, and I'll do whatever it takes to have that belt around my waist. I'm sure he's going to have a great training camp. I'm sure things are going great. There's only one problem. He's taking on jason maloney man third time's a charm you're not gonna let it get away from you and uh you know how dare anybody share the ring with you that day that day is going to be your day when you wake up it's the maloney day man from start to yeah. finish until the the new journey starts as future world champion bantamweight champion of the world um yeah. i i wanted to share this with you we talked we mentioned gabriel flores jr um in, in the top of the show 
I mean, what he brings to uh, an event, I mean, he brings the fanfare. Uh, a lot of people are curious. You know, he's he's coming off a loss. They want to see what what does he have left? Um, let, is he going to make another run? And I think the addition of um, now that with Fernando Vargas, a uh, former world champion who also has uh, the, the the Vargas sons um, that, that are out there, uh, Vargas dynasty, along with his brother, I mean, I'm sorry, along with his father, Gabriel Flores Sr., I think it's a good fit. I'm also excited about this fight uh, that'll be coming up. I'm not sure if it's a televised fight. It, it, it may be, but um, um, you know, there's a lot of curiosity there. I mean, when when you know that you're going into another person's backyard, maybe not your opponent, you just know it's your time. They may they may show up to watch a certain opponent, but it's your time to shine. Yeah, that's right. Anytime you're on a fight card, whether you're the main event or the first fight of the night. The goal should always be to steal the show and to have the fans leave and say, wow, I love watching this guy and I can't wait to see Jason Maloney fight again. And and that's been my attitude since day one, um, you know, when I was on the small hall shows and, and, you know, trying to sell tickets to cover my costs and my fights yeah. and things. For me as a fight fan, it's important to be fan friendly and have an exciting style and have be a fighter that people want to watch. And, um, that's something that I've always, always pride myself on is to be in exciting fights. And I know that this fight with me and Astro Labio is going to be a cracker of a fight. As I said, two hungry guys fighting for a world title. Uh, I think our styles are really going to gel well and it's going to be a very exciting fight while it lasts. I, I think so too. I mean, you got the attention of a lot of people. Um, you have some some best wishes coming in from Robert Garcia, a former world champion and future Hall of Fame trainer, Robert Garcia. He says, tell him I said hello. He's a very nice guy, both him and his brother. Class act for the sport of boxing. Oh, thank you. That's, that's very nice. And, uh, yeah, got a, got a lot of respect for Robert. Obviously, we had the uh, the little rivalry when my brother was fighting Franco and things like that. But, um, you know, that's buried for now. And, um, yeah, I like those guys, and I wish them all the best. Exactly. Speaking of Franco, he did um, come up with some, what did he say exactly? Joshua Franco, I got to find it. He said, tell him, man, let him know I wish him and his brother all the best. That family has that DNA to become world champion. Yeah, that's very nice. And um, yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what what Franco does next. Obviously, he's got the rematch with Arika, which I believe you'll win. And uh, Looking forward to seeing Bam this weekend as well, his brother. Um, I really like watching Bam fight. And, um, yeah, looking forward to him fighting this weekend and and, and winning another world title. Uh, yeah, got a lot of respect for both those guys. You know, you, you brought that up. I'm going to talk about it later on in the show. But let's talk about Bam Rodriguez. Um, he was like the un, un, unseen hero, the un, um, uncrowned champion until he got his opportunity. Then all of a sudden he just skyrocketed and uh, – you know, he used his platform, he used his TV platform to not only produce, but to win a world title and do it convincingly. When you see brothers that are, are both world champions and one relinquish his bout to, to move up and, and capture another bout, actually, I believe, move down. I mean, the thought of two brothers, I'm, I, and I said it before, uh, Joshua Frankel, Bam Rodriguez, and also Jason Maloney. And then Andrew Maloney, I mean, that that is just great for the sport of boxing. Who doesn't want to see that cross pass one day? You know, I know it's one fight at a time, but I'm sure you think about it in the back of your head or that question or that subject has been brought up to you before. Yeah, yeah, it has definitely. And, um, yeah, it's awesome to see so many brothers, I guess, succeeding, you know, yeah, with, with Franco and, 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 and Bam and then, uh, yeah, me and my brother and the Charlo brothers and, yeah, lots of lots of brothers doing this together. Uh, I think for me it's definitely been a massive advantage having my brother with me every day to push each other, uh, you know, just train alongside someone and have someone with you, you know, like we get to do this whole training camp together and I have my brother with me to push me along the way and, and pick me up on, you know, if I'm doing something wrong or if I, I need to lift in this area. I think it's been a huge advantage. So I can see why there's starting to be, you know, siblings and brothers having success because I think it's a great advantage. Um, and, yeah, I mean, people have spoken about that before. I mean, there's been even the mention of tag team boxing. Obviously, we saw that uh, the other day with uh, with that Misfits boxing. They did the tag team. And, yeah, I imagine that me and my brother are doing a tag team fight against 
yeah, Bam and Frank and, and Franco or the Edwards brothers or, you know, yeah, I would love that. Um, and, yeah, there's always going to be that, I guess, that, that you know, the crossing of paths or our names will collide because of we're both brothers and we're both in the same weight division. So, yeah, it's exciting and you never know what the future holds. Exactly. How far does that competitive nature go? Brothers or not? You guys both want the same prize, and, and you guys can are so competitive. With, you know, iron sharpens iron. T- tell us, what was it like growing up together, and, and both of you guys were maybe in, in, involved in the same tournament? Yeah, well, growing up, our, our I guess, competitiveness was really strong against each other. Uh, yeah, boxing particularly, you know, if we ever sparred, it was, it'd get real heated, and we had a lot of fights and you know outside of the ring and you know we'd we'd really clash because we were just so competitive and wanted to one-up each other all the time and in footy you know we'd both always just have this real competitiveness against each other any any sport we did we both hate losing especially against each other because I don't know I guess that's just the thing when you're twins you you know it's like you've got this rival born with you that you just have to try and beat and be better than um but as we've grown up and matured uh that that competitiveness against each other has maybe pulled back a bit and now we try and help each other more we we realize that it's not me having to be better than andrew it's me having to be the best band and weight in the world and andrew having to be the best super fly weight in the world um and now it's more about helping each other and you know, we can both succeed and we can both be the best in the world so we don't have to have that against each other, which I think is great that we're in different divisions because it obviously makes that uh, a lot more, yeah, a lot more possible. But, yeah, now we help each other more, whereas in the past, yeah, it, it got pretty heated. <laughs> I think it's that twin thing because also the Charlo brothers, um, you know, uh, they're also twins and they still got that strong competitive nature. Now, um, Bam Rodriguez, Lee openly said, he said, you know, a lot of, of my skill level is, uh, is from getting my ass kicked by my brother, Joshua Franco. So he, yeah. he already kind of passed the torch. And then you got Nate yeah. Diaz, uh, the Diaz brothers. Uh, he'll say, you know, a lot of my success is Nick kicking my ass all the time in, in the, in the dojo. So, being that said, I think when it's that twins, nobody really wants to. It's like who came first. It, it doesn't matter who came last. You know, it's it's kind of like the what <laughs> whoever was born first. In your in your opinion, you probably said, "Well, you were the first one going in the ring. I was the headliner. I came the last <laughs> one." Uh, so forth. Uh, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So Andrew can say um, the reason he's got so good is because I always kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. That's what Andrew's going to say, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, today when I was putting up the um, I was putting up the post today, and uh, I um, I had Andrew on my mind. And I was going, okay, Andrew. I go, no, no, it's, it's Jason that's on today. I actually had to go back and look at my notes. I'm going, come on, because I mean, it, it's hard to tell you guys apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people, yeah, I, it is, it is. Uh, you know, there's no doubt we look very similar. But as as you get to know us, uh, yeah, you'll see the you know the differences. Um, people that have known us for a long time, obviously, think. You know, it's quite easy, but I guess for people like yourself that don't see us all the time, yeah, we are very similar, very similar. This next uh, questionnaire, it's coming in from Hall of Famer Lee Samuels, top ranks on Lee Samuels. He said, ask Jason, if he can pick anywhere in the world, would he like to fight at Madison Square Garden, MGM Grand, or downtown LA, Australia, or you name it, even the moon? Yeah, well, Lee Samuels is an absolute legend. I love that guy. Can't wait yeah, to see yeah. him. Um, I've, I guess, I fought in at the MGM against the Nui, but it was during the COVID times, not in the proper, you know, the proper venue with the proper atmosphere. Yeah. So I love the MGM. But if I had one choice, I would probably say Madison Square Garden. I think it's just so iconic. Some of the best fights ever at that venue, and yeah, that's a venue that definitely on my bucket list so hopefully one day at msg well make sure you do it during basketball season so you can stay a day longer and watch the knicks play the very next day who happens to be my favorite basketball team but you know yeah we'll i love that kind of run they that. make yeah that sounds good so when you're not out boxing when you're not out just being the father that you are or the brother or or, or the son that you are um what, what do you like to do you know what, what's big in australia is it um uh, you know, soccer, is it rugby? What do you, what do you like to sit back and watch and, and root for? 
Uh, look, growing up, my hobby, my passion was Australian rules football. I don't know if you've ever seen Australian rules football. It's a, it's our, I guess, Australian sport that's unique to our country. Um, yeah, it's an amazing sport. And for me, growing up, I just wanted to play footy. I wanted to be a professional AFL player. Um, so if you haven't seen Australian rules football, um, YouTube or Google it and have a look. It's it's a pretty awesome sport. Definitely something that I uh, that I love. But for me, it's all boxing these days. Um, boxing, 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 and any chance I get where I'm not training or watching fights or or you know doing something to prepare myself for my training, uh, it's all about family. Um, I've got two young daughters, a four year old and, and, and an eighteen month old, and yeah, it's all family. We like we live um, at probably one of the best beaches in the world in Australia. We've got some of the most beautiful beaches around the world, and um, yeah, we love to get down the beach. I do a little bit of surfing, swimming, and yeah, just spend time down the beach and spend spend time with the family. And that's that's my favourite thing to do outside of boxing. Well, your family's always good. And uh, right now we're going to take a short break. But b- before we do that, I want to talk about our sponsorships, man. I, w- I want to give a shout out to Andy Vincent. Um, you know, he sponsored the Fighter's Voice with the meal when we were in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And, you know, I was eating anything from Doritos. Just let's not talk about that. I did what I needed to do to cover the fight. You know, the expenses, you know, they kind of add up. But Andy Vincent sent over a meal for the Fighter's Voice. Um, you know, the Haro brothers, they make sure we were taken care of. So I want to give them a special shout out and also give the sponsors out there a great opportunity to be a sponsor and team up with the fighter's voice. We'll run your segment. We'll run your logo. You know, for example, this next segment is sponsored by, and it'll be uh, you, the sponsor out there. So we invite the sponsors to come in, keep the lights on so we can have some great worldwide guests like the future Bantamweight champion of the world, Jason Maloney. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe www.youtube.com slash the fighter's voice. Remember every fighter has a voice and so do you. We're going to take a small break and we'll be coming right back. Hi, I'm Jose Ramirez. I'm Bob Arum. Hi, I'm Robert Garcia and I'm with the fighter's voice. The only radio show knocking out the competition fighters voice radio show hey we're back i'm your host richard ortiz and if you just join us right now our guest tonight is jason mayhem maloney who's going to take the bottomweight world title may 13th and he's going to invade the 209 stockton california and you can watch that fight live on espn top ranks own jason maloney you know at the break i i just got a um a small text and uh, Maydad from Australia. He said, let Jason uh, know that I wish him well. I think he's going to be very successful come May 13th. And he'll do his very best to make the trip into the States because he wanted to come and visit Fresno. So when you hear that, uh, one, one of your own Australian zone, um, how does that make you feel, Jason, knowing that you have the fan support? Yeah, oh, it makes me feel great. Um Australian boxing is going great at the moment. We're um, starting to make a bit of noise, which is good. And, um, yeah, the support I receive from everyone in Australia is just amazing. Um, I've got a good crew, actually, that are all getting their flights and tickets organised and flying over to be there and watch me uh, raise that world title and, and, and win that world title for Australia. So, yeah, it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the support I get and uh, can't wait to bring this belt down under and uh, help Keep growing this sport. We've, uh, yeah, we've got a good crop of young fighters coming through and we're starting to, to get recognized, which is great. Well, you know, we're going to take your business first. We're, we're going to get the Bantamweight World Champion. And then I want to talk about your hit list because I know you have a hit list. I know there's somebody out there that might have rubbed you the wrong way or someone you said, you know what, mate, you're not all that. Or, you know what, we got some unfinished business. Or, you know what, I'd love to share the ring with you. Who is on that list? You don't got to tell us why, but who is on Jason Maloney's hit list? Yeah, well, I think the division's very exciting now, now that uh, obviously Anui's moved up and, and all the belts are vacant. And there's some, yeah, really exciting fights coming up. Um, I think Don Ed is definitely on my hit list. He's going to fight for the WBC title, and I think he'll probably win that. And, um, yeah, that was a fight that I was really hopeful that was going to be made and that I was going to fight Don Ed next. But, unfortunately, that didn't happen, um, but that's definitely um, very high on my priority list. And, 
yeah, if I win this belt and he wins the WBC, then we can make that unification fight, hopefully. Um, you know, I've got a lot of respect for, for Nonito. He's a future Hall of Famer and a legend of the sport. But that's what excites me, the big names, the big fights, um, and, and you know, the fights that are going to bring a lot of entertainment and excitement. Um, so that's definitely higher my priority list uh, to happen as soon as possible. Um, the next one would be Emmanuel Rodriguez. I think he's going to fight and win win the IBF title. And obviously I want redemption. Um, I thought I won the first time, but unfortunately he won the split decision. And, yeah, I want to get that back. Um, I know that I've improved so much since that loss. And, yeah, I, I believe that if we were to fight again, it would be a completely different outcome. Um, and I know that he's rated as well number one in the ring and I'm number two, so we could fight for the IBF and the ring magazine title. So that would be incredible. Um, definitely a, a big goal of mine is to become the ring champion. Um, and then Takuma Anui, Anui's brother, is um, going to fight for the WBA title. So... I could get one back in a little way and, and beat his brother as well. So that would be pretty cool too. So, yeah, there's some exciting fights in the division. And obviously, first things first, I've got to beat Astrolabio. But, um, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to my reign as champion and, and some exciting fights to come. You know, my personal favorite, I, I just think of, of great matchups. And, uh, you know, I'd I like to see you in one day, Jaron Akaha share the ring together. I, I think yeah. you know, he throws volume and so do you. And yeah. that, that'll, that, that'll be a blockbuster. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've seen Jaron along, uh, you know, along his career. Obviously, he's just come up from um, Superfly. But, yeah, uh, that's definitely an exciting fight. Um, yeah, I don't know what he's got coming up. I think he's in training camp. I think he might even be over there with Astrolabio training at the moment in America. So, yeah, um, yeah, man, there's lots of exciting fights and, you know, me, I'll fight anyone. Um, I want the big fights, the hard fights and the exciting fights that the fans want. So as soon as we get past Astrolabio, um, yeah, there's some exciting fights to come. You know, you, you talked about everything in your, you know, without giving away your game plan. I mean, what can the fans expect once that first bell rings, man? I mean, let's get right to it. That bell rings, uh, third time's a charm. You're there, you put the work in. And is it in attack mode? Is, you know, I know you don't want to be denied. What can the fans expect? Yeah, it, I like to be aggressive. Um, and I, I don't want this to be left to the judges. Um, I want to really put it on this guy and, and break him down and put him under pressure. Um, he, he, I think when he beat Rigandau, he averaged about 30 punches per round. So he doesn't have a high output. He's got, he's got power. You've got to respect that he's got power in both hands. Um, but I don't think he likes to fight it at the pace that I like to fight. And I want to keep the work rate up and break him down. And I don't think that he can keep up with me for 12 rounds. So it's going to be a mission of breaking him down and breaking him down and um, just running over the top of him and, and getting that belt and uh, celebrating with the team and enjoying the moment. Exactly. Before I get your opinion or some thoughts on some upcoming fights, what fight uh, fighter today uh, um, excites you? Who, who are you a fan of? Who do you like to watch? Or who do you kind of uh, pull a little bit of, of that fighter into your own um, weapon and uh, defensive uh, mold and posture? Who excites you? What fighter today? Uh, there's a lot of fighters that I like to watch. Um you know, I, I love Canelo and guys like that. Um, there's not really any fighter, one in particular, that I really try and emulate. You know, I'll pick little bits of people's styles and, and, and try and work on that. And, you know, I like what this guy does here, I like what this guy does here. And um, But Shakur Stevenson, definitely one one of my favourites to watch at the moment. Fight, um, fight Saturday. Looking, yeah, looking forward to watching him fight this weekend. Yes. Um, yeah, Shakur... Ryan Garcia, I like Ryan Garcia. Um, I like, you know, he's got good snap. He's nice and fast. I like the way he boxes. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fighters, a lot of fighters. I love, I love Terence Crawford. I can't wait to see him finally get back in action. Um, yeah, a lot of fighters that I love to watch. Um, none that I necessarily, as I said, sort of try and replicate. But fighters that I love to watch and, and love the way they go about it. At, you know, they're really, really classy guys that. That they just seem to make it look easy. 
Speaking of, of a classy guy, a lot of people won't agree leading up, but uh, the way David Benavides handled himself after the fight, very, very humble, very classy, put all the, the the talk to rest, took care of business, and also uh, Caleb Plant. Let's give credit to Caleb Plant. Both men handled business in the ring. And what did you think about the matchup going in, and was did the outcome uh, live up to all the hype? Yeah, well, that's probably one I, I didn't list. I really like watching Benavides. He's a great fighter. And, yeah, great fight. I did expect him to win, but I thought Plant started the fight really well. Um, yeah, you know, tested him, which is what you want. You want to see want to see these guys get tested and, and see how they can overcome those tests. Um, yeah, incredible fight. And, as you said, both guys really classy afterwards, which is what we all like to see. It's uh, This is the gentleman sport. And, um, yeah, I do like to see that. You know, it's it, I don't like it after the final bell when people – keep going on, you know, once the fight's done, shake hands and be respectful. And yeah, that was, that was a nice moment. Good for the sport. So let's talk about an upcoming fight that uh, the fans are the winners. I mean, we already won, uh, Jason, um, because we get to see, we're treated to get to see um, Tank Davis taking on Ryan Garcia, MGM Grand, sold out in the matter of, of minutes, under five minutes, I believe. Hotel prices are already through the roof and it's just, uh, you know, they toured New York and then L.A., and now they're in camp taking care of business. What do you think it does for the sport of boxing, and who do you have going into that fight and why? <laughs> that is such a hard one to pick. I really like both guys, and, um, yeah, I was spewing that it uh, sold out so quick. I'm really hoping that I'll get to that fight because I'll obviously be be over there in Vegas at the time. So, um I love that fight. It's great for the sport. It's so good to see that the you know the fights the fans are asking for are actually starting to be made, which is great. Um, it's really hard to overlook Tank's power, but I'm leaning ever so slightly towards Garcia. Um, I think he's just smart. I think he'll be able to keep the fight out long and use his speed and and his work rate. And I think it he'll just. I think I can see him winning on points um, as long wow. as he doesn't get caught by the devastating power. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be an incredible fight and, uh, yeah, one I can't wait to watch. You know, I've, I've went back and forth on that fight. Uh, if you were to ask me today who wins, I'll have a different winner tomorrow yeah. <laughs> with, with an explanation, of course. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to make my my call um, during the ring walk or in, or in case I see something at the weigh-in or yeah. it may be just right before the first bell. I, I you know, picked fights uh, accordingly because I just couldn't find anything until I saw something and then I went yeah. with it. So it's it's one of those fights. I'll pick them fight. It definitely, it definitely is. It definitely is. And you know, hopefully the uh, the whole weight thing and the rehydration clause and all that doesn't have too much of a factor because you want to see both guys at their absolute best. So okay. yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great fight. And uh, yeah, one, I yeah, I would I might change my mind again before the fight starts, but at the moment I'll I'll pick Garcia. Exactly. That whole topic that you just brought up right now about the weight thing, and that's a whole show in itself. I, I just think yeah, that um, <laughs> I, I would have I would have waited and took the advantage and, and say, no, I need to rehydrate. I need to be healthy going into that fight. But yeah, you know, um, you know, Ryan must know his body better than we do. So going in, I just want both men to go in healthy and, and come out healthy. And as you know, you know, there, there could only be one victorious. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I can't let you go without asking you, Devin Haney, Lomachenko, who do you have going in? Who do you have leaving with all the straps and why? Another tough one. Um, I'm going to go with Devin Haney at the moment, just going off recent form. I think Devin is just getting better and better. And now that he's the undisputed champion, I think he just goes to another level with the belief and the confidence and, and everything that, that comes with being champion. Um, I love Lomachenko. I've always, always loved Lomachenko. But Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but off, off recent form, you know, obviously Loma hasn't looked great. I guess his last two or three fights, it hasn't been the Lomachenko of old that we all grew to love. But he could easily turn back the clock. Um, maybe he needs a challenge like this to get up, to get him up. Um, and you know, to be at his best but I think at the moment yeah with with Haney just with how good he is I think the size difference is is a big factor I think Haney is 
this has got to be his last fight at lightweight. I think he's definitely outgrown the division. And and I, I, I think him being so, yeah, I just think he's going to be too big for Loma. Um, but incredible fight, incredible fight. And another one that, that you know, the boxing fans win. Uh, these are the fights that people want to see and the fights that, that, you know, we all want to be made. So it's an exceptional fight. Um, but if I was to put money on it, it I would pick Haney. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, when I saw uh, Haney, I I couldn't believe how big he was. I don't know how he makes weight. This is definitely his okay. last fight uh, at this weight. He was waiting for the Lomachenko fight. Of course, he took the rematch. He was a man of his yeah. word, took the rematch in, 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 in you know Australia. Yeah. But he is a big boy. Huge. And, Jason, they say once you win the bout, you be, automatically become 25% better. Yeah, I think with Team Haney, he's become fifty percent better, and you said it right off the top. He's getting better and better and better. That jab he sent down on his punches, uh, that right hand he has more pop than ever, more head movement, and it's like he got faster all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like people say, yeah, you, once you become world champion, yeah, you become twenty percent better, and I can't wait for that myself. Um, but yeah, I just. I've seen him in person. He, like you said, he's huge. And and in Melbourne, I think you could see uh, that getting down to 135 took a bit of a toll. He, he didn't look great at the way, but he still performed incredible. Um, so hopefully um, he will get down to the way and he'll perform at his best and you'll get both guys in there at the absolute best because, yeah, you always just want that. You don't want any you know excuses or any factors impacting what's going to be an incredible fight. Um, but Loma's not a big guy, you know. Lom- Loma, I think, could easily make super feather or, or even featherweight. Um, so going up there, you know, at lightweight against a huge lightweight like Haney, that's a tough ask. Um, but if Loma can wind back the clock and, and be, you know, the Lomachenko of old, then then uh, anyone anyone can win that one. You know, he had a tough time with with, with Ortiz at his last fight, and. Uh... You know, yeah. it was, um, you know, it, it was close. I think it was close on the scorecards, but, you know, um, did enough to to get the opportunity to take on Devin Haney for for all, all the bouts. And that's definitely going to be a good fight. Let's talk about one more before I, I put the brakes on you and put you in the hot seat. I want to talk about Josh Taylor taking on Theofimo Lopez. In my opinion, Josh Taylor is the best 140 pounder in the division. I think Regis Pro Grace is the face of the division. And then, you know, I have our very own Jose Ramirez, um, who's definitely um, an opportunity away from becoming, once again, a world ta- uh, champion, two time world champion. Who do you have between Josh Taylor and the Fimo Lopez and why? Jeez, that's a tough one. <laughs> You've. You, you, you've got the hard questions coming at me at the moment. Um, geez, that's hard. Because uh, I would right. agree. I would agree that uh, Josh Taylor is probably the best 140-pounder. Obviously, he didn't um, fight great in his last fight against Jack Cattrall, and there was big controversy as to whether he deserved the, the, you know, to win that fight. Yeah. He's had a fairly long layoff since, injuries and changing of trainers and, you know, setback after setback. So he's had a long time out of the ring, which isn't great. Um, so he's going to want to prove a point there and, and you know, prove that the catch rule fight was, you know, just a bad night in the ring and that he is still the best 140-pounder. And then you got Teofimo Lopez, who obviously he's in the rise-up. He needs to prove again that he is the king and, you know, he had so much, you know, hype around him when, when he was – you know when he beat when he beat Loma, I was there that night. Couldn't believe the performance he had. It was the way he fought that night was incredible. And if he fights like that, I think he beats Josh Taylor. Um, the, if he can f- perform the way he did against Lomachenko, that was I- incredible. Um, but that's a tough, tough fight to pick. Um, I would lean just slightly towards Josh Taylor because I think he's a very, very good fighter when he's at his best. But, yeah, the factors have been out of the ring for a long time and, you know, maybe Josh Taylor's doing it hard making 140 and having not made the weight for so long, there's a lot of factors there. There's a lot of factors there. So I 
think they could go either way. I really do. Uh, another great fight, but I'll, I will pick Josh Taylor, but it's not confident. Okay. Okay. I, I kind of been going back and forth. I'm kind of, I kind of slightly towards the female, but I, I get caught up because of the relationship I have with his father, but yet Josh Taylor was just super cool with us. Like we met him at different times and yeah. was one heck of a guy, man. I mean, his whole team, and he's also a big boy for the 140 pound division. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Tiafimo is a great guy. I've met him a couple of times now and, yeah, you know, this isn't picking the best person. This is just my opinion on the fight. Um, I yeah. hope – I would like to see him win Very because, well, yeah, yeah um, you know, he's a great guy and he's always been friendly towards me and, and supportive towards me. So I hope that we see him at his absolute best again. And if we do, then he can 100% win that fight. So fingers crossed he's, uh, he's back at his best and we get to see an incredible fight. Well, Jason, you know what? I'd love to keep you on here all day long, man. Where can we follow you on Instagram? What's your Twitter? What's your handle? And what do you got to say to all the fans that rock with Jason Mayhem Maloney? Yeah, yeah, please follow me. Uh, I appreciate everyone that supports me uh, since day one and, and to now, um, you know, five weeks out from achieving my dream and becoming champion of the world. So, Please watch my fight May 13th and support me. Um, I guarantee it'll be a great fight for you all to watch. Uh, and follow me on Instagram at Jason Maloney, uh, on Twitter at Jason Maloney1, um, or you can go on my, my website, which is teammaloney.com. But, yeah, thank you to everyone who supports me. Thank you to you, Richie. Um, I always, always love chatting to you, and thanks for having me on the show again. Oh, it's my pleasure. But before we go, once again, those sponsors out there, you're interested in becoming with uh, mixing it with team, the fighter's voice, get a hold of us and subscribe to the YouTube www.youtube.com slash the fighter's voice. Uh, looking for sponsors, want to keep the lights on, get a chance to just post your business on the podcast, your show, whatever it is that you'd like, your logo, we'll take care of it. We'll give you the publicity that you need and we'll honor it and do it with professionalism as we always do. And I want to give a special shout out to uh, the football flag football team in Millview, uh, Madera, California. Uh, our guys did really well. And I told them I promised them um, that I would give them a shout out. I hope I remember some of their names. And uh, let me see, Jacob, um, later, um, gosh, uh, there, there's a kid we nicknamed him 11 teen because Jason, the kid's 11 years old and he looks like he's a teenager. So we nicknamed him 11 <laughs> teen and I, I can't name all, all the guys, all the fellas, but you know what? I, I, I said I would do it and, uh, I can't post your picture because you guys are minors and I do work for the school district as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to tune in May 13th. Watch it live on ESPN and watch Jason Mayhem Maloney become the bantamweight champion of the world. Third time's a charm and third time he will win by knockout. He's not going to the scorecards. He said it. He prophesied it on the show. You call things as if they're not as if they are, just like the Bible says. And mark my word, the Maloney brothers are back. As Thank always, you, I'm your host, Richard Ortiz, the best part of the show. It's a wrap. Thumbs up for Richie. <laughs> okay, fight fans, it's not goodbye, but until next week. Remember, remember, remember. It's always voiceography at its finest. So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, the special guests, and all the crew, saying hasta luego, babies. And always, thanks for listening.